This video is brought to you by DataQuest, and you can find us on the web at uh, www.dequest.com. Uh, today I'm going to show you the recurring payables function in Sage 300, and uh, you would use this feature anytime you have uh, repetitive billings from one of your vendors on some sort of recurring frequency, perhaps that's monthly, biweekly, um, certain day each month, uh, etc. So this invoice comes in every month, um, comes in on the third, and it gets auto paid by credit card actually. So we're going to set up a recurring payable for this invoice, and then we're also going to uh, set up the payment for that invoice uh, on the fly. So first step is to create a schedule so that on the third of every month, it automatically prompts us uh, to have this particular invoice processed. The starting point is to go to the Common Services area of Sage 300, and you want to find your scheduling icon. So from the scheduling icon, you're going to go to Schedules. Um, we happen to have a couple of schedules out here already. Um, what I want to do is I want to make this process monthly on the third of each month. So since I've already got a monthly on the first out there, I'm just going to use that as a template to create a monthly on the third. With my template record up here, then I'm just going to edit to change to my new calendar values. So rather than monthly on the first day of the month, um, it's actually going to be monthly on the third day of the month. Um, which users are going to get prompted for this? So do I want to set up a specific user who is the only one that gets prompted on this? All users in our scenario, we're going to say a specific user. Uh, remind in advance. So it might be worthwhile to remind a couple of days in advance uh, since this needs to be processed on the third of each month. Um, we're just going to pop this forward to the um, current session date. And then what is my frequency? I can tell it um, every Monday, uh, every Monday and Tuesday. I can just say um, which day every number of weeks semi-monthly, monthly, yearly, etc. So we're going to do every one month on the third day of each month and add that as our schedule. I'm going to go over to Accounts Payable, and I'm going to go to AP Vendors, and I'm going to go to Recurring Payables. So <clears throat> what I want to do is find the vendor that I want the recurring invoice to process against. Um, I know that that vendor has Amazon. So there's my vendor. And I will copy paste my recurring payable code. Um, the recurring payable code will be helpful to you because you can uh, use that code to organize your different recurring payable schedules that you have out there for various vendors. I usually like to make the recurring payable code um, begin with the vendor number and then a dash and then some suffix that actually um, makes it meaningful uh, for the kind of recurring transaction that it is because sometimes we have multiple recurring payables for a single vendor. Uh, so we're going to leave that as it is. And our schedule is monthly on the 3rd, so we're going to pull that in. And when does this start? Because I can activate this on some day in the future. Um, we're going to go ahead and have it start on the first day of December. And there's not going to be any expiration date, as opposed to perhaps uh, maybe some loan payments where you want to have it recur until it's fully paid, which you expect to happen on a specific date or you just let it keep running for a certain number of occurrences, or after the total payments have reached a maximum amount. Um, <clears throat> and then you set up uh, you know, some other typical payables options. If you have a different uh, remit to or need to override the account set, then you come into your detail. And your detail is where you indicate um, what GL account this is going to. And we're, I'm just going to leave a dollar amount, in this case, at zero, 
because each month in terms of the Amazon Web Services um, invoice, it varies. So instead of uh, having that come through and be a meaningless amount, we're just going to leave it at zero because we know we have to overwrite it. And then finally, I'm just going to give this a, a description. So we're going to have Amazon Web Services monthly on the third. Okay. And then we're going to add that, close it, and close it. And so now I'm going to go ahead and sign on to my system, but I'm going to sign on with a date greater than the third just so that we can see how this actually prompts and gets processed. So now we have um, multiple schedules that want us to take action. And so we have monthly on the third. So any time one of the schedules get triggered, this dialog box is going to come up and want to be processed. So you can actually drill in and look at the details of the schedule if you wanted to. And then from the schedule details, click on the details button here, and you can see every um, recurring payable that is uh, waiting to be processed. So I'm going to come back to my dialog box, just click process, and now my invoice transaction got automatically created. So if I come back and just look at my invoice payables and I bring up that recurring payable, I can see here that it came through. It came through with a $0 amount. I'm just going to take a quick peek at my origin original invoice. 457.22 is the total. Pop that in. Save. <clears throat> Got my little warning that tells me um, I'd forgotten to match up the multiple detail, the possible multiple detail lines to my document total. This is just a, a check that Sage forces you through. Just make sure you're paying attention on your data entry. Um, and then now I'll go ahead and save, and I have a successfully entered unposted invoice. Um, since this particular vendor uh, is auto-paid by one of the bank accounts, um, <clears throat> we put that in the description in our situation just so it reminds us that, hey, we might as well go ahead and click on the prepay button and then go ahead and indicate that we're going to be paying out of bank CC100 because this gets automatically paid and charged to the credit card. So we're going to say CC100 charges here because this becomes the um, payment batch description. So when I add this transaction, it's, it's going to auto-create that batch, give it this description, and it'll be out there waiting for me to post. Um, we designate EFT as the payment code type um, because we're not actually going to produce a paper check. This is going to get uh, electronically managed, of course. So when we click Add here now, um, this particular invoice transaction that gets auto-paid is uh, going to be posted to my accounts payable outstanding invoices. And then we have a corresponding batch uh, that is a payment batch. And when I post that, the outstanding invoice will get relieved and we'll have a reconcilable um, item waiting to be reconciled as a credit card charge transaction. Thank you, and uh, any questions, please contact us through www.dequest.com.